Cinema 5D at Photokina 2016 is brought to you by Angelbird, there to capture your creative moments. Tilta, arm your camera. Genus Tech, redefining the price point for quality camera accessories. Blackmagic Design, creating amazing solutions for film, post-production and television. And Manfrotto, imagine more. Hi, this is Seb from Cinema 5D and we're here at the Olympus booth at Photokina 2016. And Olympus just uh, announced a new camera, a photo camera that shoots 4K video. So it's the first 4K video shooting camera. And it's, it seems pretty interesting. It seems to be quite serious for Olympus. And Janne here is a filmmaker and uh, Janne has had the chance, you have had the chance to play with the camera already. So can you tell us a little bit about what the camera does, what its strengths are and how it was in your experience? Yeah, I mean, um, my experience has been fairly brief, half a day. That's what I was given on the pre-production model. Uh, but it is a huge step, a step in terms of it, for Olympus in terms of uh, catering to the video, video maker crowd. I mean, uh, this is, I've already used the M5 Mark II on a multiple uh, feature film documentaries, uh, full-length jobs, TV, TV shoots, but it's always kind of been that, you know, the client, client wants 4K, Olympus is out of the game. So this actually puts it, it, puts it in my terms, uh, on the same level with a lot of other, other big players. I mean, it's, I can, I'm no, no longer limited by what the camera can do. I can choose, choose it uh, choose it for what I really like. I mean, the, I think the biggest things is, for those who have not tried the Olympus cameras, is the stabilization. It is um, honestly a game changer in terms of um, what you're able to do in a one-man crew or run and gun. Say that, say that you're doing super long take, ac action film stuff. We've done that too and it's it really gives new possibilities in terms of moving the camera without having a huge production budget. Yeah, we tried. We, we did a quick hands-on before, yeah. and, and it's amazing. I mean, uh, I think I could use this camera yeah. like a gimbal. Yeah. Actually, you can move the camera a few centimeters left and yeah. right, yeah. and the image stays stable. It's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, we've used it, used it um, to on shots that where, where we can't fit a gimbal. I mean, uh, we operate on the Mobi M15 a lot of times, and when we've got special shots that we need inside the car, we need to move from the back seat to front seat. Some really weird shots like that, or just uh, shots on like. Mounting, mounting this camera onto vehicles is something we use it a lot for. It's, it's a fantastic B camera for, for action shots where you really need to hide it like on moving subjects. But yeah, but if you, if you haven't tried it with, uh, with the 12 to 100, that's where things get really interesting. Because when you combine it with the optical and uh, with the in-camera stabilization and the lens stabilization, it becomes really serious. It's all, I can do moves that, I mean, I'm, I'm a Steadicam operator for over 10 years. I can pull off moves that I've done on, on a big Steadicam and with, a, with something that uh, equivalent of 50mm lens and do the same moves just with the camera and a bit of weight. So Janet, does it mean that the sensor image stabilization works in harmony with the lens image stabilization? Uh, yes, if you have a lens from Olympus with image stabilization, it will basically double up on top of that. So you're using, if you're used to lens image stabilization, think of that times two or even more. I mean, uh, if, if you think on, for uh, photography terms, I've been able to do two second handheld shots. And you think about that, what, like, how much movement there is there. There, there is a lot of movement that, it, that this thing is able to stabilize. I've always also used um, Cooks, Zeiss, like all, all possible cinema lenses on anamorphics as well. And it can stabilize all of them, which is really interesting for filmmakers. So we're talking about gimbal shots to a certain, certain degree without a gimbal handheld on the run, run and gun. It's very interesting, especially because everything is more and more focused on gimbal yeah. stabilization on movement. Yeah. So uh, one thing that is really interesting, of course, when a camera when a camera manufacturer brings out uh, video uh, professional video for the first time, yeah. is, the question is: uh, Is this a video function that is really working for professionals, or is it like in baby steps? Um, depends on uh, what your requirements are. I mean, if you if if you need the highest highest possible dynamic range, color fidelity, everything. There are, of course, more expensive t expensive alternatives. But when we, th when we think about it then, okay, if I got a small camera package that can pull off some pretty crazy moves without a gimbal, and it can say, do, say, like 70% of what I can do with an Epic Mysterium X, X for example, I think that's pretty damn good. So um, it, it will not replace uh, full-on professional cameras, but for people, who want to pack, pack lightweight, 
who still want to be able to move the camera, who still wants good color. And, I, and actually, the codec is good. I've had a chance to grade, uh, take it to a grade house and then play around with it and grade it. Can't show you those images yet, though. <laughs> Pre-production camera, but I think it's. I th I'm honestly, I can say it's on par with uh, with the later offerings from Panasonic, the previous generation ones. And the 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 data rate of uh, 4K is 237, 237 megabytes now. Yeah, 237. Yeah. In comparison, the Sony A7S I think has 100 megabytes yeah. in 4K. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's got a lot of depth. I mean, we were under under exposing two stops, and we were still able to pull up details easily, which is quite good when <laughs> for yeah. camera. So you know the, the the latitude is up there with other ca cameras in in their price range. Um, I think the color fidelity is there as well. It's got, it's got an Olympus look to it, so it's not. It's really something different than everything else. You either like it or you don't like it. But I think it grades well into anything. And for example, I was, I had a much better um, luck matching skin tones with uh, what we sh what we shoot in the red and such uh, than with uh, a lot of camera makers, especially Sony. Sometimes I had a hard time with uh, skin tones, skin tone matching. But uh, does this camera have a flat mode? Uh, they've got a flat mode. Um, it's not s log flat, so it's not like the super the most flat that you can get. But it's flat enough that you still you actually have a lot of data to play with. Cool. Thank you, Yanni. We're really looking forward to test this camera, and uh, thank you for the interview. Yeah, I hope you get a chance. All right, thanks. Thank you for watching.